So let's think about the time complexity of this approach, right? How long did it take us to come up with a solution? Right, so, so how, many, how many points did we have to make a decision? Uh, and this is essentially you know, the framework we want to use. We want to say, uh, as a function of the number of stages, so let's, let's let n be the number of stages, and let's let d be the number of decisions to make at each stage, decisions per stage. And I'll just set the stage haha, by uh, reminding you what the exhaustive search and the greedy algorithm complexities were. So exhaustive was this. Exhaustive was big theta of d to the power of n, right? So if we have, if we have d decisions to make per stage uh, and n stages, then we have d to the power of n uh, total, total uh, decisions to make. Greedy was much, much, much faster. So greedy was big theta of n times d, right? Because at each stage, all we had to make was d decisions. And, and there, there we go, we go on. So now let's think about what's the complexity of the dp approach. So what about the, what about the dp approach? Well, let's think about at each node what we had to do, OK? So at each node, we had to make d choices, okay? So, so in, in other words, here three choices, right? Because there's there's each each node gives us three decisions to make: up, middle, or down. So at each node, we had to make we had to make three choices. So each node three choices or d choices, right? So that's the definition of d is the number of of choices to make at each node, d choices. Okay, now how many nodes are there in each stage? Right, so how many nodes are there in each stage? Because we have to do this for every single node, right? Unlike the greedy algorithm that just ignores whatever node it doesn't come to, the DP algorithm actually does have to look at every single node. Well, we have three nodes in each, in each stage, right? Why do we have three nodes in each stage? Because each one of those nodes corresponds to one of the possible decisions we could have made in the previous stage. Right, so just like we have d choices in each at each node, we also have d nodes in each stage. So in each each stage, we have three nodes. In other words, we have d nodes. Right, if we're trying to to kind of go along with this in a generic way, and then in total we have n stages. All right, so how many decisions do we have to make altogether? Well, d times d per stage times n stages, right? So in total, we end up with a big theta of n times d squared, okay? Where d squared is the total number of choices we have to make per stage, and there's n stages, so we end up with n times d squared. Okay, so, it, so if the number of decisions is small, and the number of stages is large, then the DP approach gives you an exponential speed up compared to the exhaustive approach, right? So DP, so, so I should say this with, with many stages, DP is exponentially faster, faster, or DP, than exhaustive. Right? And even with many decisions to make, right? even though exhaustive search is only polynomial in the number of decisions to make, you're still going to be faster in, in DP uh, as long as you don't have, you know, as long as you have a large number of stages. Right? So, so D to the power of a large N is going to dominate D squared right? as, long as, N is, as long as N is large. So again, with many, with many decisions to make or many choices, DP is faster as well. Right. And you give something up, right? You do end up with this, this linear factor on here that doesn't exist on the exhaustive search one. Um, but in any case, in any case, uh, you're you're considerably, considerably better off. Okay, so let's just review a little tiny bit of the concept here before we close. So the whole concept of DP 
relies on the idea that you that some problems are composed of overlapping subproblems. So you'll see this a lot, this, this term overlapping subproblems. And so as I introduce various problems that we can solve using DP approaches, I'll try to be clear about what these overlaps are. So we use DP, we use DP when a problem has overlapping subproblems. All right, and so the idea in uh, the idea in the routing problem was that the overlapping subproblems looked something like this, All right? So, for example, I might have this. This is one potential shortest path, or one potential path in the graph. This is another path in the graph. This is another path in the graph. And th that's, those are three distinct paths, right? In an in a, in a, in a overarching sense, they're three distinct paths. Uh, but they're not three, they're not totally distinct, right? They all overlap in this section, okay? And so if you solve the last chunk of each of these, like if you figure out which one of these three is optimal, then you get to ignore any, any fake distinction between, between the, first three, the first three decisions, or the first two decisions you have to make. Uh, so essentially, all the, the only distinction between these three different paths is, is lies in the end, right? which is what makes them overlapping. Right? And so the whole idea of DP is to come up with a clever description of a subproblem to your overall problem, and then to go methodically solve the, the proper subproblems that you need to to be able to solve the overall, the overall problem. And so this is this is the core idea of DP. And so we'll be spending at least two weeks on DP. Um, it's a it's an area of algorithm design that can be kind of confusing to get started with, and in particular, it can be hard to identify what kinds of problems can be solved by DP. So we'll do a bunch of examples. Uh, I'll I'll try to introduce as many of these concepts as possible, and then we'll do a couple algorithms that are crucial aspect uh, like kind of crucial applications of DP. So. In particular, we'll do an algorithm that solves the knapsack problem that's based on a DP concept, and then we'll do a, a, a classical algorithm that, that solves the TSP that's based on a DSP or DP concept. Um, and so using those, hopefully, we'll, we'll kind of be able to build up our, our intuition for how to use these things in general.